Hi, Allison Malika here today to answer a question. How to use Site Maestro? I have one of our Apps Events fans wants to know how to create uh, those Google Site templates and send them out to their constituents. What do I mean by that? Well, many times you want students to create a project or a course portfolio. And you might want it named a certain way, you want it shared with you, you want the criteria predefined. So here are placeholders set up for uh, this project-based portfolio. I want students to begin with this. They can modify it and populate it as they wish, but this is the starting point. How do I get this site created for each student? I could have 100 or more. And have it shared with me the way that I want it. First, you create a site. So you start with any site you, you are an owner of and set it up the way you like it. The second step is to create a sheet. So I'm actually going to um, create a new sheet so you can see that I have a completely blank spreadsheet. Now, you will need a roster. So I'm going to show you that uh, what the criteria that you're going to need are the first name, last name, and email address of the student. So you can see it's going to be first name, last name, email. That's what you're going to need. So I'm going to title this Portfolio Spreadsheet. Portfolio Spreadsheet. Great. I start with a blank sp spreadsheet. I need to add an add-on called Site Maestro. As you can see by selecting add-ons, I already have it. You would have to go to Get Add-ons and search for it in the add-on gallery. You can just type in the word Site, hit Enter, and it will come up as an option to add. You just click on Free to add it. Once Site Maestro is there, you click on Add-ons again. You hover over it. The first time you launch it, it will ask permission for you to accept the permissions. I've already added it, so that step is not here. Once I select Launch, it will prompt me to import a roster. So if you've used Doctopus in the past, you can pull in a roster. In this case, I'm going to create a new roster and select Create a new roster on this sheet. And what it does is it sets up your columns for first, last name, and email. I'm going to grab uh, first, last name, and email from this sheet. So I've got first and last. I'll just grab a couple of students, copy. I uh, will bring them here, and then grab the email addresses for them. All right. So I've got some sample students set up here. I'm ready to go. I'm going to refresh. And I'll give the roster a unique name, Portfolio uh, Roster. I'm going to save and continue. You'll be amazed at how quickly this the job gets done. Search for sites on which your students are already owners or editors. Note, this process can take a long time to run. I never do that. I don't need to. I'm ready to skip this step. Again, remember, you need to be the owner of this site. I am the owner of this site, so I'm going to grab the URL by copying it. It's prompting me to paste it in, so I'm pasting it in. It says, oh, I found your project or course portfolio. What level of permission do you want your student to have? I want the student to be owner. Owner means they have full access to edit the header, the footer, the background colors, all of that. And you want in most cases, that to be the level of access. Select the site access level. So searchable uh, and viewable only in your domain, public on the web, or private. So most schools say, hey, we'll just leave it searchable and viewable within the domain, and then when the student wants to, they can make it public if they so choose. Set the site naming convention. So here, I'm just going to have it called uh, Values, uh, I'm going to have it called the, the last name of the student. Values from any column in this sheet can be included in the site name. So in this case, I have them here. I always recommend that you copy them. Control C, I'm going to copy last name. Even though I can type dollar sign last name, I always have a typo. 
at nine times out of ten. So I copy paste things and I'll call it portfolio. So now it's named that student's last name portfolio. And then I save and continue. Um, this panel relies on temporary secure access to the site's API. That means you will be occasionally prompted for additional authorization. Explained. Authorize. So then when you click on Authorize, it will open a new tab and tell you that you're all set and you can close the tab. Now you're ready to create your sites. It will prompt you with a warning that sites cannot be mass deleted. You have to go one by one and delete sites. So if you're not sure, you might want to wait. I'm going to go ahead and create these sites. And you'll be amazed at how quickly these sites are created. While this is processing, I'm going to log into the student account at the top, Cameron. And I'll go to his mailbox because Cameron should get an email indicating that a new site has been created for him. Let's take a look back and see how the spreadsheet's doing. Looks like Burns portfolio has been created. Now what's nice about this is that there's a direct link to every site that you've created. So I can look at it from the teacher end if I click on this. And this is how beautiful is this. There it is, named just the way I wanted it to be named. And when I click on share, you notice that it's private only to me because I haven't processed the share settings yet. So if you're perplexed because you're wondering why it's not yet shared with Cameron, I'll show you why. Because the first step is to create these sites. Cameron has not been made aware that the site has been created. And it has not been shared with Cameron yet. But I can now look and say, yes, this is just the way I want it. Phew, I'm glad because I don't want to individually have to delete all those sites. Now I can enforce sharing and visibility settings. I process this. And this push outs the permissions that I had selected, that Cameron is an owner, our students are owners, and that anyone in the domain can view them. So nobody has to log in to view the portfolios. If the portfolio needs to be viewed by another teacher or other students, nobody needs to assign those permissions. Now you can see that the site is set to be searchable and viewable in the domain, and Cameron ha also has access. So I'm going to go over here and refresh as the teacher. So you can see that the lock has changed on the share to a community share. And then Cameron will be added as a specific owner to the site as well. In, I have to tell my dog to wait. Go see Ryan. Sorry. So here, as this loads, you see Cameron is now uh, an owner. And if I go to Cameron's... Um, mail, he should get uh, an email indicating that he has a, a new site. I don't see that there. So I may just direct my students to go to the uh, app launcher and click on sites. Let's see if his site is here. If not, we'll assume there's a slight delay, which is normal. So let's see, do we have a portfolio site? Um, looks like Burns portfolio was indeed created. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And this is the site that I was viewing as a teacher. So Cameron has access, the teacher has access, and that was all done through a simple script called Site Maestro. I'm going to go back, and now I can open the site management tools. At this point, I'm really done as a teacher because all I really needed to do was have a, a list, a clickable list of all the sites and I needed to have the auto, auto created for each student. Now they can get to work. Here are your site management tools options, however. You can get the most recent edits by student, the most recent edit by anyone, get all collaborators, add collaborators, remove specific collaborators, change the student's role. So example, if I grab change student's role, I can change the role from owner to editor. So I could say, okay, you guys have this week to change the whole look of the site, but then I'm going to change you to editors later. I normally keep students as owners. I see, you know, I've never had a reason not to. Um, 
that's your call. Remove all collaborators, uh, fetch site visibility. So you have these options on the management. You can go through each one and kind of experiment and see what they mean or not. You're done. So that was uh, how to use Site Maestro to create and share your Google Sites using Sheets. If you're interested in add-ons and learning more about Google Apps, you should go to appsevents.com and see when the next event is in your area. Thanks for watching.